Hi everybody, welcome to the third lesson of Learn Revit API course. In the previous lesson, we've created our own custom Revit extension, and now I wanna go over it and explain you the basics and all the free resources that you got with my starter kit. There's really a lot of them, and they will be very beneficial to any Revit API developer. And now, let's just dive straight into this and have a look. Right here, I have my Learn Revit API extension open, which I've just created, and you can see there are a bunch of different buttons. First of all, you get your about page where I'm going to congratulate you on creating your own Parravit extension. And this is where you can leave a testimonial for the starter kit. Then in here, you will find the resources and then you have different placeholders and dev panel. We're going to get to this in a moment. First, I want to focus on resources because I believe this is where the true value comes from. First of all, I provided here a lot of links to all the common documentation that you need. You'll be able to find here Revit Developer Documentation, Revit API Documentation, Revit Developer's Guide from Autodesk. And this is actually a very interesting guide. It's gonna be for the C-sharp users, but still, you can take any C-sharp code and translate it to Python with ChatGPT. But in here, I found that it's actually very good for the advanced topics. And for example, if I'm gonna have a look here, and maybe let's say that I click here on Dynamic Model Updater, there is iUpdater, and you find a lot of different information, code samples, and so on. It just depends on what kind of topic you want to learn from. Then in here, you find links to my ebooks. There's going to be beginner's guide to Revit API and filtered element collector guide. How to master getting your elements, where you're going to find a lot of code snippets and explanations. Then you're going to find here templates. This is a template from Dynamo Primer and it's for Python nodes in Dynamo. And then here is the PyRevit template and PyRevit minimum template. This one is exaggerated version because there's going to be literally everything, there's going to be a lot of comments and so on, and this is more like for education purpose. But in reality, you would mostly use this PyRevit minimum version, where you get a few regular imports, a few variables, and then you just can start coding. This is what I would normally copy and paste into new buttons and start creating tools. But we're going to cover it in one of the next lessons, where I'm going to explain you PyRevit anatomy. Now, we're going to go to more interesting things, now we're going to look at the resources. In here, you will find different links to the forums, SDK, Stabs, also link to my website to the free lessons, which you already watch. It's going to be this first module of the course. And then in here, you're going to find Autodesk University Revit API. This is just going to take you to Autodesk University with a filter for Revit API sessions. And you can scroll through and see, and maybe you're going to find something that's really interesting to you. But also keep in mind that many of this presentation is going to be quite outdated. All right, now we're moving to more interesting resources. I'm gonna start with the code samples. First of all, you can go to the GitHub and search for PyRevit. There is a link right here. And when you search for PyRevit, you're gonna find 243 results of other PyRevit extensions. And it means that you can just scroll in here, maybe click on other extension and have a look inside and you're gonna find like hundreds, if not thousands of different code examples. For example, this is extension of my tutorials for YouTube and you can find here different examples. For example, here's element parameter filter. How does it work? I click here and here's the code. And another thing, if you're gonna replace this github.com to github.dev, you're gonna open the same repository, but in the online version of Visual Studio Code. And it's gonna be much easier for you to navigate and find whatever you want from this extension. Now, let's close that. Let's have a look more. Then also in here, you find learn rate API Python snippets. This is going to be on my website where I just drop a bunch of different snippets. I don't have any search implemented yet, but if you scroll through, you're going to find lots of different examples. Here's how you create a beam. There's going to be a code snippet. Here's how to create a room, then how to find key parameter items, how to get crop box and so on, so on, so on. You can see there's really a lot of them. And now we're going to have a look at the most valuable part of the starter kit. And this is the code samples. I didn't just create you a extension with a folder structure. I also included here a lot of code samples. Let's say that you want to know more about Revit API selection. I'm just going to left click on this button and it's going to open this file in the PyCharm. It's also going to open the folder with all my samples and templates right here, which you can explore. But in here, you find a lot of value. For example, for the selection, here's an example how to get selected elements, how to select elements with rectangle, how to pick an object, how to pick multiple objects, pick point, pick box, set selection in Revit UI, and so on, so on, so on. Let's say that you want to learn something about parameters. I'm going to click here on code samples parameters. Here's how to select an object to work with, then how to get instance parameters, type parameters, how to read the values, how to get built-in parameters, shared parameters, and all, all of that. And many, many more. This is where the true value comes. I strongly recommend you to just explore here and have a look inside. Here is how to select different elements, how to create a wall, create line, create room, text, beam, field region, how to copy elements and so on, so on, so on. 
I tried to include as much as I could, but also keep it very beginner friendly. And then for more intermediate users, you will also notice that there's VPF form sample. And custom UIs in Revit is a big topic, but I'm gonna make like a mini course, maybe even the whole course soon. And here's an example. In here, we can write maybe some text examples, text one, text two, then click on checkboxes, select something here. I also have it right here. We can click on it, submit, and then gonna get all of this input printed out. And if you wanna know how it works, you will just come here, hold Alt on your keyboard and click on any of these buttons. And you're gonna open the folder where this button is located. And when you deal with VPF, you will learn that you need the XAML file for the front end and then script.py file for the back end. And this is gonna be a really good example for people starting out with the custom UIs. But this is not a beginner friendly topic. I have to warn you about that. All right, and this is pretty much all about code samples. You'll find here a lot. This one is also nice, translate C sharp. In here, I try to include, here's how you do this in C sharp, here's how you do this in Python. But if you're inside my paid course, there's gonna be a whole lesson where I'm gonna break it down all the differences between C sharp and Python. I think it's gonna be in the second module. Lastly, this PyRevit starter kit also includes EF Revit API tutorials. You can click here, it's gonna also open my custom UI and there's gonna be a link to my YouTube videos. And there's quite a lot you can find interesting. You can find how to read Revit API documentation, Revit API resources, my roadmap, hooks, how to automate sections and so on, so on, so on. Let's just close it. And that's it about the code samples and Revit API tutorials. And again, right here is the button to leave a review for the starter kit and I hope you're gonna like it and you're gonna share your experience. On the bottom, you also get links to my blog, my newsletter, if you wanna read something else. There's really a lot of information that I cover about Revit API. And in here, if you scroll through, you'll see, for example, how to purge view templates, how to create view filters, and just various topics that I share in my newsletter. We can scroll through and you can see there's lots of text, lots of images, because I try to send this kind of mini tutorials to your inbox. But this specific case, it's actually not that mini, but it was very useful to many people. Now let's have a look at the placeholder panel and dev panel. This is just kind of to show you the structure of PyRevit. Because if you're gonna look at this image right here, PyRevit is just all about creating the right folder structure and PyRevit knows how to display it. So every button in our extension, in PyRevit extension or others like EF-Tools extension, is just based on the folder structure. And you can hold Alt and click on any buttons. Let's say that I wanna come here to view filters and have a look how do I create a legend. When you're gonna click, it's gonna open a folder, but sometimes it opens the folders in the background. But I can see it right here. I can open it, scroll through, and see how other people create their code. In this case, this is not a simple example because there's a lot involved, there's custom UI and so on, but you're also gonna find a lot of simple examples. For example, let's have a look here. How do we unhide all elements in the active view? We're gonna open this up and you'll see this is a very simple tool. We're just gonna grab all elements, and then create the list and then unhide it. Very simple for any beginner. But what it means for your extension is that it's very easy to modify. Let's just hold Alt and click on one of these buttons and you'll see that we're gonna open the folder. Then when I'm gonna go outside to the dev panel, for example, you'll notice I have my dev button one, two and three and same is here. I have my dev panel and then there is button one, two and three. When I'm gonna go out to the tab, it refers to learn Revit API tab. And in here I have all the panels, my about panel, which you can see right here. Then there are resources panel, which I can see right here then placeholder panel, which is this one, and so on. So it's very easy to understand how everything is working by looking at the folder structure, which you have here, and then see what do you actually get inside of Revit. For example, I can see right here is my push button, my URL button, which is this one and this one. Then I have this kind of stack menu where we can place three different items, and it's gonna be this stack example. And after that, we have our pull down example. And we can also put the pull down menus inside of the stacks, so we can put even more tools. And it's very simple, and occasionally you're also gonna see the bundle.yaml file. Inside of this file, you will see that we can control the layout of our extension, if you wanna change the order of things. Because for example, you can see that in here, I have a bunch of different folders, and this is how they look. But in here, I wanna make sure that the push button is the first one, then we have URL button, then we have the stack panel, and then we have pull down menu. And it follows along all of this. And now, if you would want to create new buttons, you would just come here, copy one of the push buttons, for example, and we would rename it. I would call here a new button. And what's important is that you leave this that push button in the end. This is what really matters here. Let's open it up. I'm gonna open the script. Make sure you also rename it here. I'm gonna call it new button. 
Inside, there is my regular template, and you'll notice that you have to automate your boring work here, and you need to delete this part right here. Because by default, all these buttons are made that when you click on them, it's just gonna open this menu and say button 1 was clicked, and you can hold alt and click to open the source code of this button. I'm gonna click on this push button, it's gonna say push button was clicked, and the same description. And listen, I'm gonna talk about this in just a moment, but first, I just created a copy of my push button and I don't see this. This is because I have to go to PyRevit and click right here to reload. This way PyRevit will look again at our folder structure and see if there are any changes. And if there are changes, then it's gonna add buttons or remove them depending on what you do. So when we're gonna go back, you see that I still have nothing. And this is correct, because again, if I'm gonna go to this folder structure, go to the panel, I have my bundle.yaml file right here and it controls what is shown and what is not shown. So in case you use ordering, you would need to copy the name of your button, open the bundle and say, okay, I wanna see it in the end. We don't need that push button here, just the first part of the name and then save it. And then it's gonna be shown. Or we can delete this bundle YAML completely and then it's gonna show all the buttons inside of it, but they're gonna have the same order as they have inside of this folder structure. So this is gonna be the first, second, third and so on. I will bring back because I think I want to have my own order. I'm going to reload PyRevit again so we can see this new button. So whenever you're going to create new buttons in PyRevit and you don't see them, usually there are a few reasons. First, you might have misspelled one of these endings because that extension, that tab, that panel, that push button, they have to be all lowercase exactly like this. And I had people reach out to me saying that they did something wrong, it doesn't show. And then we noticed that that, that push button had three T instead of two for some reason. It just happens. Just be aware of that. Or as I just showed you, it's because of this bundle.yaml file, which controls the order. And if you haven't included your button, then you're not gonna see this. And now have a look right here. There is my new button. So I just duplicated one of the folders and I have this new button right here. Also, as I've mentioned, when you click on any of these buttons, you're gonna have the same message over and over. And it's all about reusing the code. I'm gonna explain it in more details in one of the next lessons, but for now, I just want to point your attention that when you're going to go to learn React API that extension or however you called your extension, you're also going to notice there's a library folder and then there is hooks. Hooks are very special things. It's like event triggers in PyRevit. In there, you can subscribe to certain events and then you can trigger some code. For example, in here, I left the code. But if I'm going to comment out all of that and then reload PyRevit, then this hook will start working. And I'm maybe going to explain hooks by the end of this course because this is a very advanced topic and I think beginners should avoid it at all costs. But I'm still going to show you that when I'm going to do that, then I'm going to go to insert tab and click on import cat. And this is the event that I subscribe to and whenever I do this, I'm going to get this message. Import cat is not allowed, use cat link instead. You can do whatever you want in there and also I provided here something for the password. Only users with password can import cat. Honestly, I don't remember the password. It's somewhere here. Uh, it's learnbravityapi.com. So if I would put it here, click on OK, then I would be able to import cats. Again, this is not a topic for the beginners. Hooks are really for the intermediate and advanced users because you have to make your code very efficient because it will be executed every time event happens. In this case, it's not a problem. But if you're going to make an event for, for example, checking one of the parameters, it's going to be executed every time and it has to be very efficient. That's it about hooks and then library. In library, there's gonna be a whole tutorial in this first module where I'm gonna show you how you can reuse your code. So instead of copy pasting the same function, I just wrote it once right here, which is called kit button clicked. And then inside all of my new buttons and stuff here on the bottom from snippets, custom print, I import this kit button clicked and then I execute it. This way I have one place where this function is located. I can update it here and it's gonna be applied to all the places where it's used because you know, Good programmers code, but great programmers, they reuse code. And this is why you should start reusing your code as soon as possible. But we're gonna have a whole lesson about it in a moment. Don't stress it right now. All right, I hope that you get a really good understanding about PyRevit folder structure and how you can change anything to make more buttons, less buttons and control their order. We're getting closer to actually start coding with Revit API, but before we're gonna do that, we need to set up your development environment. And that's what we're gonna do in the next lesson. So you definitely don't wanna miss it out as well. We'll download a few Revit plugins, we'll install PyCharm and Visual Studio Code ID, and set up Revit API autocomplete, so it's much easier for you to code and reference the doc strings. 
And now I'm gonna leave you a little homework. I want you to go to your extension and clean it up, remove what you don't want. Maybe you don't wanna see this Learn Rate API panel. Then you're gonna hold Alt, click on it, just go out to the Learn Rate API panel and delete it, right? Then when you go to Revit and reload with PyRevit, it's gonna be gone. So just organize it the way you want it, maybe prepare some buttons that you want. And I strongly recommend you to leave the dev panel. This dev panel is very often used for unfinished tools. This is where you create new tools, you work on them, and once they're ready, you're gonna move them to any other panel. And now PyRevit has finished reloading and you can see this panel is gone. At the same way, you can add more panels, remove panels, and so on. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I wanna wish you happy coding and I'll see you in the next lesson where we're gonna set up your development environment. Goodbye.